In this video we're going to do some purge welding on some sanitary stainless tubing. We're going to go from start to finish on a two inch joint. We'll talk about purging, some basic equipment that will help you get a purge easily, a few tips for fit up and tack welding. Then we're going to weld this joint out walking the cup and we'll show plenty of good crisp clear arc shots so you can see what's going on and of course the end result. Hey, we're going to get right into the key points of stainless sanitary welding in just a few seconds. First, I've got a quick announcement. I've got a new product. It's the Weldmonger Dual Flow Meter with the best warranty in the industry. If you're interested in learning exactly how good that warranty is, just click the link in the description and you'll also see a special offer. You'll see a different flow meter in this video because I shot it almost two years ago. And at the end of the video, you'll see what that special offer is. Let's get to welding. This is two inch diameter, roughly 063 wall thickness, 316L stainless steel. That's pretty common in the sanitary industry. I'm using a tape that's designed for powder coating. It's a high temp, kind of a see-through tape. And we've got a little apparatus here with a purge valve. I'll show you a little bit more detail on that in just a second. We're going to be using roughly 15 to 20 CFH on the purge. You can definitely get by with a little less flow rate, especially once the system is purged out. But as long as your vent hole is sized properly, this amount of CFH works pretty good. Now we used a piece of clear lens, just regular 2x4 welding clear lens, and taped on this thing. And notice we've got some little areas around there where the, just the tape is sealing it up. And that's actually pretty useful because as if we if we were to rotate this thing, we'd need the vent hole at the topmost point. Remember that argon is heavier than air and it displaces oxygen just like if it were, you were pouring water into a container. So if we were to rotate this thing, we could poke holes in those little areas and still vent. This is a label off the, the tape that I'm using. You can probably find it on Amazon. That's where I got it. Andrew brought a little purge apparatus with him that worked pretty good. He actually fabricated this thing. So that's a, a little clamp to go on the bottom with a little swedge lock fitting port that goes in there. And that's connected to some Tigon flex tubing. And that's connected to a little inline valve here, which is really handy. That's close to you, so you don't have to always walk back to the flow meter to turn the purge gas on and off. The reason for the Tigon tubing as opposed to just rubber hose like automotive vacuum hose or something like that is that it is less porous, less likely to carry any parts per million of oxygen or oils or things like that. Starting off at 65 amps, not going to need that much. We'll figure that out as we go. You really got to pay attention to mismatch and high-low. You want to get it exact. There's no point in having any mismatch on something this thin. Again, it's roughly 063 wall thickness. That's pretty common. We're going to tack it up in this position, purging it out while we tack it. Tacking at fairly low amperage, about roughly 35 amps. Not really caring whether or not we fully penetrate it on the tacks. Don't care if we do because we got it purged. Best practice is to purge it while you're tacking it. I know a lot of people don't. A lot of people try to get away with stuff, but if you do penetrate it at all without a purge, you're kind of screwed. That means you got to cut it out, you got to replace material. It's going to take more time to do that than it would just to purge it to start with. So we're putting four tacks like you would do on a pipe. Four tacks 180 degrees apart from one another. So every 90 degrees, four little small tacks, roughly three-eighths or half inch long. Not just little zaps, but something that'll hold it in place. One good thing about making sure you have a purge on it while you're tacking, even if you don't think you're going to melt through or penetrate, is that you get to check your purge once you're done tacking. So you take a little quick peek after that, and if everything's nice and silver, you got some confidence and you know you've got a good purge. For the tack welding, we were at 30-something amps, but we did a little trial run on a scrap piece and determined about 42 to 43 amps is going to get us where we need to be for a fully penetrated, nice, smooth route. With a dual flow meter, the one on the left is the torch, the one on the right is the purge gas. We got about 30 CFH with a number 8 gas lens cup. Andrew's going to take a little dry run here, show you kind of how that motion works walking the cup coming off the bottom. 
you don't want to go really wide with the walk in the cup. You want to kind of limit the, the, the action a little bit. And so right now he's got roughly probably about 5 16 electrode extension. And that would work out okay. But by shortening that just a little bit, that will, that will kind of narrow up the weave motion. That'll keep the heat focused right on that joint. So here we go, coming off the bottom. Pay close attention here. Andrew is really dialed in, trying to stay centered up on that line, on that seam. Sometimes it even helps, helps just to knock a slight, slight chamfer on that thing, just so you can see it better. At least it does for me. My eyes are not 23 anymore. A little body position change. Trying not to miss a beat. Again, just a narrow little walk the cup, a narrow little weave, keeping that seam lined up in the center of that puddle. Now, it, it's worth mentioning that you don't have to walk the cup on a joint like this. It just lends itself really well to sanitary tubing. You can freehand. Uh, sometimes you have to freehand because there might be another one right next to it on three sides of it, and you just don't have room to work the torch around like this. But when you do, like in a tripod vise, uh, it sure does make it go nice. If you have to stop, if you sneeze, if something happens like that and you just have to stop, making a restart is usually not a huge deal. You just don't want to have a restart if you don't have to. You want to come from bottom to top without stopping. Hey, real quick, if you're trying to get better at TIG welding, we've got beginner courses as well as advanced videos over at welderskills.com. You'll find a link in the description that'll take you to a seven-day free trial. Let's get back to it. Check the root real quick. A little quick inspection. It looks like we got a really good purge. We got full penetration. No problems there. Ready to do the other side. You want to start overlapping just a little bit. Make sure it blends in to the previous weld. And that's usually probably only about three-eighths of an inch behind. That gives it time to warm up and fully penetrate. I didn't catch that shot. Notice the electrode is nice and clean, nice and sharp. Again, a body position change from kneeling to standing. It's part of the gig with this, this type of welding usually in a tripod vise. And when you get to the top and you tie into the previous weld, you want to overlap and trail out to a teardrop so you don't leave a fisheye. And then again, while it's still warm, brush it off with a nice clean stainless steel brush. So we'll peel the tape off and the tape worked great. No residue, no stickiness. And we're inspecting the root. Nice silver root pass, no discoloration, fully penetrated, nice and smooth, nice and sanitary. Here's a nice little show and tell of a properly purged joint versus one that was not purged at all. Imagine the bacteria and critters that can grow in all those crevices as compared to the nice smooth surface of a properly purged joint. And if you're doing sanitary work or other stainless, a TIG Pro kit's got a cup for every situation. It's like the Swiss Army knife of TIG kits. This Jazzy 10 ceramic cup inside the kit would be a great choice for sanitary tubing. Here's the special offer I have for you from now through November 15th. When you order a Weldmonger dual flow meter, we'll also throw in this awesome strong hand gas flow checker. That's a $21 value added in as a bonus to an already super affordable dual flow meter with an awesome warranty. Just click the link in the description. It'll take you right to the product page. Thanks for watching.